now to a man sentenced as a, sentenced as a cold-blooded killer. Some years back now, he murdered his young wife and came within a whisker of getting away with it. His only mistake was the death of his second wife. Danny Isdale talked to the Sydney cop who hunted him down and a mother still mourning her lost daughter. You, you can't help but be affected by something like this. Peter Seymour spent most of his police career struggling to solve a single case. It haunted him for 16 years. You wouldn't be human if it didn't affect you. One husband, two dead wives, and a family torn apart. A family Peter Seymour has become a part of. Sit down, Peter. Thanks. We'll have a cup of coffee. Yeah, that'd be great. Thanks. He is always welcome in Christine Strachan's home, which is decorated as a shrine to her kids. This looks like the living room of a woman whose whole life is her family. Yes. Is that you? Yeah, that's me. I, I prefer to look up and see them and, uh, you know, I, I know they're, they're always next to me, you know. This is Jeannie and her wedding day. She was only 18. Wow. Mm. It was one of the happiest days of your life when you're mar getting married. Mm. In 1988, Jean's missing persons file came across Peter's desk. Her husband, Thomas Keir, claimed she'd left him. I just could not understand how she would just disappear like this. You know, I mean, all right, maybe for a day or so, but not even. Still, Christine believed her son-in-law. I could not face this, you know, if something has happened to her. What has happened to her? I mean... You, you watch television and you see these things. I mean, it happens on television, but it doesn't happen in our lives. You know what I mean? And I just didn't think he would be that type of person. She even introduced him to Jean's cousin, Rosalina, who became his second wife. In 1991, Peter found himself called to Kia's home once again. Rosalina had been strangled and set alight in her bed. Straight away, I thought, well, there's a, there's a big problem we've got here dead second wife and missing first wife um, and that's where it all started to unfold. Kia was charged with her murder, tried and acquitted but police had a warrant to dig up his garden and found seven bones. They belonged to Jean, his missing first wife. That's when I broke down, I just... It was terrible, you know, just... I'm sorry. <laughs> Years of trials and appeals followed. Did you at any point feel like you wanted to give up? No, never. You've got to have the belief in getting a result and doing it not only for yourself um, but for the family. Kia was convicted of Jean's murder in 2004. Now to raise awareness of domestic violence, Peter's published the whole story. Yeah, you never met Jean. You thought about her for 16 years of your life. Can you put her behind you now? No, because it's not closed, it's not finished. Uh, her memory lives on with her family and definitely with me too. Thomas Keir will be eligible for parole in two years. That man should tell the truth and, and once and for all and ask forgiveness. It's the only thing he can do. I've forgiven him already. You've forgiven him? Oh yes. I can't forget what he done, but my religion tells me to forgive, and I have forgiven him, and I'm at peace.